talking about digital ID, how you and me need digital ID. You know, the kind of things that were talked about when they were trying to push the vaccine passport idea before it stopped making sense because there was no evidence, because there was no trialing that the vaccines prevented transmission. Then it sort of didn't make sense to track who had vaccines and who didn't, and it sort of fell apart for a moment, but they'll be back. In your country, the United States of America, uh, they had a program and project to create, and this was an Obama, Barack Obama idea, a kind of driver's license. Educated on globalism from an academic perspective by a journalist who's legit and has bought receipts. After you've watched Whitney Webb, you are going to feel more intelligent, particularly if, like me, you take NMNs from Black Forest. Are we still giving a 25% discount on these things? How many have I had today? Am I taking too many of these? You know, I've got addiction issues. I have to be careful, but I've got to have my NMNs, baby. They're like a head trip to listen to because they're only giving you things they joke about with your friends inside your living room, not MNMs. I don't want to get into Vivek territory here. Mm. Excuse me. Let's look at Tony Blair around the streets of Davos. Peter Mandelson, Mr. Blair, was worried about upsetting Fujitsu. Was that a concern that you had? Mr. Blair? Why won't you speak to us? This is an important issue, isn't it? Mr. Blair? <laughs> oh my god i mean that's sort of so sort of awkward and weird i always got a sense that gordon brown had a bit more integrity do you know what that's based on he was sort of boring and like tony blair was one of them kind of like you know how you have bill clinton with a saxophone he, the, uh, tony blair he was always you know jerking around on the guitar and stuff whereas gordon brown was sort of like sort of just groaning on about numbers and stuff and sometimes i think those are the kind of politicians you want they all these charismatic lunatics we've yielded to appear to have odd ends <laughs> Gordon Brown spoke to us about this yesterday, Mr. Blair. Will you? Mr. Blair, hello? Mr. Blair, hello? Do we have to tax more the rich people? <laughs> Did you see that? If you're a lip reader, um, our producer Gareth just said that Blair went, the media, and Brown went, oh, God. Oh, let's clip that up. Nice. Nice. The real C Mike 21. Probably grabbed his dick and twisted it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly childish thing to say, you lunatics. Richie D Duke, Gordon Brown sold all gold reserves off lol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your hand off. Of my You're funny. There's some good stuff going on in the Rumble chat. If you're watching us on YouTube, we'll be here for a couple more minutes before we migrate to that stream of freedom that is Rumble. And you could consider becoming an awakened wonder and supporting our work there. You get an extra video every week, and by God, it's worth it. We've just been meditating together. We're doing everything we can to awaken together and change the world. Remember, unified but decentralized. True, true, true. Democracy, baby. Uh, oh. Someone who's been doing very well at Davos. Who had a good Davos this year? It's Javier Millet of Argentina, who done a Ricky Gervais at Davos. Uh, Elon's certainly well into it. There you go. Oh, don't, should we be showing that? Does that seem right? Does that, is that right? You know, we're a free speech platform, I suppose. Um, so, uh, yeah, listen to this. Here's the head of, uh, here's the president of the World Economic Forum openly discussing the new world order. Don't you sort of think they should stop saying stuff like New World Order, isn't it? Aren't these sort of tainted brands now? Are they going to literally do the eat the bugs thing again? We are on the way to a new order, so we are between orders. Uh, do you agree with that? Or are there ways of uh, what are we able to keep on the positive side from the old order to bring into a new world order? And Stop saying New World Order. People don't like it. That brand has been very poorly tainted and and for those of you because i know loads of you like to look for signs and stuff you'll be looking at the world economic foreign sign you'll see it's bifurcated by a semicircle meaning that there's a literal 666 they want to given that they're like sort of a globalist organization don't they need to check their branding and their messaging i mean they're meant to be sort of a communication propagandist machine where the most powerful interests in the world come together to push a globalist agenda that's literally what they're doing and they keep saying things like new world order and their logo is demonstrates actual Satan. How can we avoid that that new world order uh, becomes like a jungle growing back and we rather uh, have uh, order based on international
The guy he's talking to is your president, Joe Biden's national security advisor. So no worries there then. The president of the United States national security advisor is talking to someone who's openly saying we need a new world order, which takes the best things out of the old world order, like the centralized authoritarianism, the impecunious, impoverishing modalities, the militarism, the forever wars. But we're going to need to introduce more tech and more control. How is it a satanic symbol, says Akshayuta? Oh, you're going to love this. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Look at World Economic Forum. Look at it. Then look at the O's in the words World Economic and Forum. Each of them's got an O in it. They line up. Then see how that semicircle goes through them and it makes 666 through the O's. It's, it's fun, isn't it? You can't unsee it once you see it. We, it was someone in the chat pointed it out to us. And oh, you, I love that kind of stuff. Although, you know, when you start going, your tattoo, right? It's got 33 on it. I do think this. 33 vertebrae in the spine, 33 the age of our Lord Jesus Christ when he died. That's why I'm into it. Not in the Illuminati or the Masons. Mind you, I suppose probably people that are in it keep it quiet. I guess that's how it works. But what you probably would notice is they wouldn't say things like this. Never trust globalism. Never trust the establishment. Never trust the legacy media. Never trust anybody. Demand on individual sovereignty and community democracy. Do not trust the establishment. Is that enough? I don't know law and the principles that have brought us prosperity and uh, freedom uh, for decades. We are, you know, the post-Cold War era. Kyle Rhino, I'm a Mason. Yeah, maybe it's all right. I don't know what goes on in there. Has come to a close. We're at the start of something new. We have the capacity to shape what that looks like. And at the heart of it will be many of the core principles and core institutions of the existing order adapted uh, for the challenges that we face today. And that's a, a lot of what I tried to lay out in my remarks. Some of that goes to geopolitics and how we build uh, or update the international economic order in ways that address the needs of working people, address the climate crisis. Ah, the old climate crisis, because the new world order has to do that peculiar balancing act of appearing to be reverential to ethnic cultures and minority cultures but without ever engaging in cultural reappropriation. They have to do a difficult job because fundamentally what's behind it is generate profit ensure that ordinary people are punished and controlled when it comes to subjects like climate change, ensure that there's no ability to challenge establishment and dominate a culture narratives, shut down independent media, all of that kind of stuff. And then they've sort of got to soft sell it as being like, we care about the people. And the way they do that is by getting sort of like native folk and indigenous people to perform their ceremonies. And that's the sort of thing that I'm sort of down with, as a matter of fact. I'm really into shamanism. I'm into, like, you know, although I've never take drugs because I'm in recovery, but like ayahuasca ceremonies sound pretty interesting and exciting. I have to do it the hard way myself as a meditator and a lover of the Lord and the light and all that kind of stuff. I can't get into, you know, drugs, frankly, but, uh, and I'm not suggesting that this is about drugs, but this is an interesting bit of appropriation of indigenous culture and proper. Just like they don't care about it. What I think is they don't really care about this stuff. And we're not in like central or Latin America. They're in Switzerland. I mean, what is this thing that they're doing right here? Antuma, Antuma, Chayanu, Na, Nukamahu, Anuri, Nukamai, Nukawaka, Na, Anuri, Nu, Yuyua, Nawa, Shina, Bupunk, and Tushina, Shavawaki. Shinamu Kikirani, Tsai Shabakirani, Tsai Makikirani. You better wash your hands after that. COVID could be everywhere, or disease X. No ma wonu why? Why should I? Thank you for that. That was a lovely ceremony. Now we're going to be taking your rainforest for Black Rock. One of the stories that Whitney Webb will be describing to you is how Black Rock are creating a new category called natural assets where literally everything on the planet, like a Bill Hicks joke, can be monetized. Lakes, forests, fish, trees. Vandana Shiva tells you about stuff like that when she's on the show. It's a literal Larry Fink 
BlackRock geek to own everything. Trees. Well, that tree, that should be monetizable. That's, that's creating oxygen. We should be we should be charging for that. So, like, they have someone come on and perform a shamanic ceremony, which is sort of, you know, well, why not? Cool. Let's revere the kind of cultures that are still thriving and are connected to nature and sacredness and stuff. Glorious, glorious. But when they are actually a soft cell power grab for globalists that literally have a plan, an explicit plan, Whitney Webb's talking about it in our interview, to monetize, in the words of Bill Higgs, every goddamn thing on this planet seems just a touch hypocritical. Not to mention the fact that last year they're all saying everyone's got to put a mask on and breathe inside of it. And now they've got a ceremony where you literally blow down people's snout holes. <laughs> You need a jab. You need a jab. You know, you need a jab. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Apparently, um, the thing they're most scared of at uh, Davos, the two individuals they fear most are... Elon Musk and Donald Trump, figures that are outspoken. Whether you are into those figures or not, that's up to you. I'm into myself anti-establishment figures that believe in decentralization, respecting the sovereignty of the individual and respecting the rights of all communities for self-determination through democratic and representative means. And they don't like Elon Musk there and they don't like Donald Trump there. And in fact, the propaganda of the legacy media against Trump is reaching new proportions. Now they're sort of worried that he's got red on his hand and trying to use that in some weird way check this do we have any answer on what what's on donald trump's like donald trump has has uh his, his hands are yeah. bleeding looks like he they pretend to be the rational grown-ups you know that's when you say like donald trump is a hysterical lunatic he's not an adult he lies plus his hands are red he's got red stuff on his hands i mean isn't it a bit sort of puerile and ridiculous and they're pretending to be the adults they're pretending to be the adults he has a is that sword magic marker? No, is it magic marker is it magic marker what is that exactly it looks like he has a sore on his index finger there i don't know I, maybe yeah. it's magic marker they've got nothing to offer they've got literally nothing to offer they've got no ideas they've got no values oh man it's over hey listen put the countdown on we're gonna leave youtube right now because we have got some fantastic content for you whitney webb who is way ahead of the curve on the epstein story is with us but that's uh you know that's just one of her greatest hits whitney webb is an educator she is what journalism should be the world should be built around information conveyed by brilliant journalists like whitney webb she's coming up on the show in a minute plus our analysis on some legacy media state-funded propaganda on disease x gone give it to you disease x gone give it to you join us over on rumble there's a link in your description come now okay guys if you're watching us on rumble if you're enjoying the chat like trinity 0316 or abbs or ollie loving yeah give us a theory what are you lot saying some people are saying cheetos breaking mark breaking news mark on finger who cares some says somebody else blue man group aha they finally caught him like red-handed Nice, nice, very good. We've got Whitney Webb coming up in a second. Uh, you guys ha get involved in that chat. Remember to put in, yeah, web, 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 web. Remember to put some uh, grabbing too much. Yeah, that's not bad, Bobby Mirror. That's a good little joke. Oh, there are a few of you doing that. That's not bad. That's not bad. Hey, we might want to consider becoming an awakened wonder. Join our, com join our community where we create more content every single week exclusively for you as well as doing meditations as well as doing like so i spontaneously come on and stream in the middle of the day it's a good little operation plus you'll be supporting our work as we galvanize organize and get ready to oppose because 2024 is going to be a big year are we going to be coming to your country to report on the election are you going to be coming to our country to report on what we call an election or are we looking for ways to get beyond these ludicrous elections and towards something resembling democracy right now something represent it something more akin to representation hey listen so we're gonna um, before Whitney Webb which is gonna be pretty exciting we've got a wonderful story for you where we just break down a piece of state media publicly funded propaganda on the subject of disease X now you'll be familiar that at the WF they're talking about 
Disease X, the WHO are talking about Disease X. Of course they are, because they've just proposed a treaty that will has to be signed up to by May, which will give the WHO the ability to take 5% of your nation's health budget and impose legislation, including lockdowns and mandated vaccines. Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. And... They need a disease to back that up, one might contest. So disease X is gone, give it to you. Here's the BBC propaganda unit reporting on that very thing. And straight after that, it's Whitney Webb with a class in how to handle elite establishment globalism. She is a revealing and brilliant journalist. You're going to love this conversation. If you're not familiar with her, it's very, very exciting. But uh, before that, uh, disease X, it's gone, give it to you. Here's the news. No, here's the effing news. Now, here's the fucking news. Disease X may be on its way, but we've got great news. Porting down a secret facility that works on bioweapons has got a solution on its way. Hopefully they don't leave any windows open. Especially not with those biochemical weapons in there. <laughs> What's the future going to look like when a state broadcaster just casually tells you that at Port and Down they're working on new vaccines for disease X? They also make chemical weapons there. Have we learned nothing about mRNA technology, the risks of clinical trials in these areas, the problems of dual research? And indeed, is it even appropriate that chemical warfare and vaccines are somehow alloyed? Is there a reason for this? What's going on? Let me know in the chat and the comments. Let's have a look at how the legacy media propaganda machine is supporting on this subject and telling you there's nothing to worry about and everything to be grateful for. Luckily, you're funding it. The British government has unveiled a new vaccine research facility where scientists are working to prevent future pandemics. That is potentially exactly how the last pandemic started. Scientists are working on a solution to future pandemics. That's what they were doing at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. There hasn't been a proper debate about whether or not that's what we want. Do you want it? Do you want gain-of-function research? Do you want humanised mice tested on? Do you want new potential lab leaks? Shouldn't we wait to the end of the COVID inquiry to see how this problem began, whether the response was appropriate, how effective the medicines were? Are you not concerned that the COVID inquiry has been indefinitely delayed, even though it's cost £145 million pounds already? Are you not concerned that these inquiries are not being correctly undertaken and this sort of research is still happening? Let me know in the chat. It's located at Porton Down, a high security research facility best known for its work on chemical warfare. We're best known for our work on chemical warfare, but don't you dare try and tie us down. We're also making crazy new vaccines for diseases that haven't happened yet. Experts are preparing for what is known as disease X, or the next pandemic virus. Our health correspondent Dominic Hughes was given rare access to the facility. I hope nobody coughed on him. Probably he was keeping his social distance. Although actually that was arbitrary as well, wasn't it? The delicate task of protecting the nation's health. This is one of the laboratories at Port and Down where scientists are analysing current threats, new variants of COVID, for example, and trying to identify new ones. Inside these purpose-built labs. Been built for a purpose. We don't just fling these things up. Have you ever looked into the measures of safety that are deployed, that there's BSL-2 and BSL-3 and BSL-4? And sometimes in BSL-3, that's the penultimate level of safety, there are frequent lab leaks. Do you not think that given the potential origin of the last pandemic, it's possible that this type of research should be regulated a lot more stringently, that it should be extracted entirely from the possibility of profit, particularly if it's at any point publicly funded. Do you think it's a possible problem that it's somehow become allied and connected to chemical warfare? Don't all of these things present you with a bunch of questions? And do you think that you should be involved in that conversation or are you just too stupid and potentially misinformation might baffle you? Where is misinformation coming from? Is it from independent media or state-funded media? More than 200 scientists working for the UK Health Security Agency are helping to develop and test vaccines against a range of diseases. It's vital work to keep us all safe. Yes, that's right. Now, isn't it extraordinary that underneath us now is a warning, COVID-19, and potentially when you watch this video, a pop-up, be careful, there's misinformation in this video. Whereas on the BBC that you pay for, a journalist can just soberly say, they're doing this to keep us safe. Don't you think it should be mandatory at that point to say, although the COVID-19 pandemic could have begun in a laboratory, in fact, that seems the most likely point of origin for this virus, how can they possibly claim to be the protectors of pure information 
when conveying propaganda continually. And of course, I know how we're reported on and how we're talked about. We're not morons. I don't think that science is like ridiculous or absurd or oughtn't be undertaken. I'm saying that science, when connected to a profit motive, when regulations continually support the interests of the powerful, we, the public, ought be continually inquiring. I think that these people are probably fantastic and brilliant and capable of doing wonderful work. But humanized mice being infected with MERS, which is currently happening, I believe, in China, is the kind of research that oughtn't be undertaken. You want absolute transparency, absolute clarity of communication. And if you're funding it, you want to know about it. And if it's connected to weaponry, I think it's already becoming quite suspicious. That's just what I think. Let me know what you think. We've got in many respects the toughest um, job in the world, which is to protect health against infectious diseases and environmental hazards. And it is tough because we know that the, the risks of new and emerging infections, including those of pandemic potential, is increasing. How do you know that? For decades, scientists at Porton Down have been involved in medical research, as well as the work on chemical and biological warfare, for which the centre is perhaps better known. <laughs> That's not so philanthropic. Look at this room. These female scientists doing great work to protect us all together. They're doing vital work to protect us. They do this other thing where, you know, the most devastating and awful thing is imaginable. Children being napalmed and bombed and diseased and consequences for generations. They do that as well. So they're not just heroes then, are they? Admittedly, they're involved in the development of tools that could be utilised, or in the wrong hands. Or if terrorists were to get hold of those weapons, what about governments having those weapons? What about wars being waged across the world in your name using those weapons? Are you happy about the Ukraine-Russia war? You're happy about what's going on in Gaza? You're happy about what's going on in Yemen? You're funding it. During the pandemic, laboratories like this one played an absolutely vital role in assessing how effective the vaccines were in combating the coronavirus. OK, well, luckily the COVID inquiry has been curtailed because it seems that... There's still some room for debate about how effective those medications were. Were, what the adverse events were, the cause of myocarditis, the sudden increase. Those medications were, what the adverse events were, the cause of myocarditis, the sudden increase in cancers previously thought to be quite novel. So whatever reason... Research they were doing into the efficacy and safety of vaccines, we might want to go back and do a few more trials. But as well as monitoring how effective.